Hi! So close to closing on the house. Uh, just the final last week sort of things that need to happen. the lender asking if they've got everything I guess this is the processor so there's the lender there's the processor and then there's the underwriter so it's a lot of people on their team that make the loan go through so the lender has been sort of MIA um, but when I need something I can call him and he can talk to the processor who seems really busy and overloaded um, and hasn't I've sent him a couple of emails like hey do you got everything you need and um, didn't get responses. Uh, and so finally on Monday, this is five days before closing, the title company was saying, hey, we haven't heard from them. We need the documents and to do our final title form. I have no idea what they do, like the final statements and everything like that. And so I, called the lender, I called the processor, and then I called their boss who had their number on both of their phones and left um, her message. And then they finally got, all got back to me. And he went through everything again. It turned out that the floodplain was redone in 2020, 2020. And that was two years ago. My survey is an older survey. And what it had showed was that it was zone X done in 2008. So Don't X is not a floodplain. In the 2020, they listed as a special hazard area, zone AO. So now it is a floodplain. And so I had to go and get flood insurance. Um, I confirmed with them that yes, it really is needed. Uh, I mean, I did pay, well, you have to pay the $5 for them to do a flood certificate. And it was a flood certificate that showed, yes, it's now in a flood zone now. So I did go on to FEMA.gov and I looked it up just to make sure on my own because it's easy enough to look up on your own. So I looked it up, it's in a floodplain now. There's actually a little creek right next to the neighborhood that is all hardscaped. It's got concrete um, all inside the creek, which, you know, concrete, things don't, it doesn't like percolate through and the water doesn't go down to the groundwater table as easily. And so it could, it will be flashy. And so I guess I'm not surprised they put in some hard, hardscape concrete in the culvert and now it's in a floodplain. So I hope at some point in the future, the city of Austin decides to go in and make it a little bit more of an ecosystem, eco-friendly, put in some natural plants and natural slope stabilization instead of the hardscape, do more of a bio-engineered solution and just make it, you know, more beautiful, more better for the environment, better for like sediment transport and oxygen levels in the water and you know all the plants that live in a riparian zone will be able to um, propagate there again. Right now it's just like a lot of trash and people throwing mattresses and things like that, old computers into the culvert. So that can't be good for a runoff and all the water going through all that trash and bringing the contaminants out to the river. So hopefully it's on the plan for them to fix it up. But anyway, I had to get flood insurance. Apparently FEMA only requires up to 250, 250,000. So even though the house is worth more than that, my flood insurance is at 250. I just got the bare minimum that um, FEMA will require, which is what my lender would require. So it ended up being about 1,100, 1,400 a year, I think. So it's an extra expense. It doesn't cover the whole house if something does happen. I'm, because I'm in the floodplain, I have to pay it. I really don't have a choice. Um, and you'll, you guys will know from the news, like whenever something happens, like major flooding happens, FEMA comes in and does like help out some communities and does some um, repair work. And a lot of the times people who have houses in floodplains, 
don't have flood insurance because they can't afford it and you know it's not legal to not have flood insurance but they just won't and so um we've got some some programs there to help that but i'm not super versed in all of that and i know there's like kind of engineering and ethics and equity um intersection between all of that and I should know more. I should do a little bit more research, especially now that I'm working in H&H &H and we do flood software, um, watershed modeling software, stuff like that. So uh, I will probably Google that later. <laughs> but I just wanted to say I'm so close to closing. I got my flood insurance. I got my regular insurance. I went with an internet company. I, um, what else did I need? you know, appraisal, appraisal was done, inspection was done. I talked about that in my last video when I did the kind of walkthrough of the house. And I'm starting to look at flooring. I drove all the way out to Cedar Park in my Vespa and cracked my tire and then needed a new tire because I had done that. Um, and I looked, I just stopped. It was really easy to go into flooring places. So I went into five different ones and I was trying to go into one that you know, they do it all for you. And I went into uh, another one where it's basically materials, but they've got some third party contracts and people that they can call or you can call to set up to have like the, the contractors actually come out and do it. Um, and I kind of found the whole price range. Um, you know, some were charging, you know, $5 a square foot or $3 a square foot was a really cheap one I found um, all the way up to seven, eight to $10 a square foot. The ones that are on the lower end, they also charge like labor on top of it. So you've got the materials and then you got time. The ones that were like the 550 per square foot was, um, they are, they have include the, the labor in it, but depending on how much level you need on your floor, um, it will be a different price. So I kind of got the full range. I got an idea. They're going to come out and do some quotes. I'm going to have two different companies come out and give me a quote. I'm going to do a uh, vinyl and um, yeah, so I'm just starting to get all my thoughts around everything, what I'm going to have to do, the parties I'm going to throw to have, um, people help do mudding and stuff like that. And I'm super excited. It's like starting to get to be real. I was trying to hold off on buying anything. I haven't bought anything yet for the house. Um, I've just got all these things bookmarked of what I want to buy. And I have just really been moving funds out of my brokerage account, which is my investment account that I've been using or was using. And so I moved out basically everything that was a long-term stock, which has the lower tax rate than the short-term stocks. Um, and it was just about as much as I needed. I got confused with the money moving over. I had thought I moved enough and then I looked and I couldn't find where um, I was like 25,000 short. So then I moved 25,000 more, which ended up being the rest of my long-term stocks. And then it all came through and so then i had like liquidized too much money um which i guess is better safe than sorry but you, you know you're paying taxes on that whenever you move it so and then i got my pto payout from my last company which was about twenty thousand it was probably about seventeen thousand and so i've got a little bit of extra cash that i've pulled out that i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to hold some of it because i'm gonna have lots of taxes next year because i've liquidated all of this but I've got some cash to do the renovations right now, which is nice. I am feeling very grateful that I've had that little um, nest egg to the side. I don't have anything in like an emergency fund right now, but I plan to um, slowly build up my emergency fund again. And I could always just, you know, take money out of the stock market at a higher tax rate. That's a short term stock if I wanted to. Um, but obviously that's not as optimal as just using the, the stuff I've already brought out. I shouldn't need that much money to do the renovations because I'm doing it myself. Labor is what tends to be most expensive. I'm doing most of it myself um, with my help from my parents and my friends and people like that. And then, um, yeah, it'll just be materials and I'm not doing, I'm doing kind of the low end on materials, low to medium. Um, I don't ever go for anything that's kind of, you know, more on the luxury side. But uh, yeah, and obviously I'm gonna try to save what I can since I'm doing it myself. If I can save cabinets, I'm gonna save cabinets. If I can, um, you know, the walls, I'm not gonna redo them, I've decided. I'm just gonna try to fix them up, mud them, retexturize them, and then go with that. So it's all starting to come together and I'm so excited. And I will for sure let you guys know 
how it's going day of closing when I go into closing and afterwards. So yes, I'm excited and I'll see you guys around. Bye.